So, Brian, I spoke a little bit about you know our customers wanting to get the cloud operating model to where the data is and where the workloads are. Can you talk a little bit more about it in, in terms of how GreenLake empowers this vision? Yeah. It, you know, it starts with everything that we've been doing and focused on uh, at HPE is focused on customer. Customer experience solving those customer problems. And this has really been around, uh, you know, how do you bring the resources to where the data is? How do I bring the resources that I need um, to where it's going to be? And really focused around delivering that cloud operating model. Uh, Vishal touched on some of the, that, that key piece, but many customers don't want to operate the complexity of it. They want the value proposition of the public cloud but where can I deliver it where I need it to be? Again, uh, at the edge, my edge branch locations, in colo or on-prem. That's good. So, Brian, I mean, the other, um, you know, we had the big announcement today, right, with around uh, HP GreenLake for private cloud. Can you talk a little bit more about the features and also what you're hearing from customers? Because I know you had a lot of conversations yeah. with customers and analysts, right, yeah. on the value proposition. So what are you hearing from them? Yeah, it's, uh, it is around that uh, cloud operating model, uh, right? It's, it's again, how do I get the capabilities that I'm seeking for the public cloud? Vishal mentioned early, as you think about the agility, the self-service, that consumption model, pay for what you use, uh, that experience that can come into play. Um, but again, I have 70% of my data is still on-prem, or where am I collecting that data? I think you gave a great uh, analogy earlier if you think about like the factory floor. I'm looking at weld defects and doing high-speed imaging of those. Well, if I'm shipping that data to and fro, trying to mush, push that to the public cloud, I'm introducing latency. I'm adding the cost of moving that data around. So if I can move that capability to where that data is, where it needs to be analyzed and processed, the faster I can analyze those defects, the faster my processes can move forward. And that's about delivering that private cloud experience where I need it to be, bringing those resources there. So we focused on kind of key value for customers, that easy button of cloud. How do I deliver an operating model and that responsibility matrix, just as if it was a public cloud experience. HPE is providing and delivering that underlying service. I'm free to now manage in the data plane, my applications, my workloads. Um, we, of course, have focused on, as HPE, that enterprise DNA, everything from zero root of trust security all the way through delivering SLAs yeah. for the availability of this, kind of core to that. Um, but of course, giving that cloud experience, that flexible and fungible experience. How do I provide that self-service capability, shift my mix of how workloads are consuming that infrastructure, scale up, scale down, kind of core to that, that pay-as-you-go piece. Um, and then really that focus on open ecosystem, both in the form of open standards, bringing in or enabling open uh, source tooling, uh, de facto standards, things like Terraform as a uh, operator, how do I manage that infrastructure, um, but also that, that openness of embracing that ecosystem of ISV providers, uh, as we talked about or touched on the marketplace and growing that ecosystem. Brian, I know, I mean, there are a lot of components to the private cloud, right? I mean, there's like, a, you know, cloud modules, there's the software, there's like, you know, a whole bunch of other things that we do to, to pull this solution together. Can you talk about some of the building blocks and, and how they come together? Yeah, uh, so it very much starts with that concept of cloud modules. How do we provide um, building blocks that are common and provides that underlying tooling that allows us to deliver that service, yet are workload optimized. We're able to provide ratios of compute to memory to storage, how do we think about networking specifications to make sure that we can still serve the needs of more complex workloads, but using those standard building blocks of technology. Uh, we, of course, have provided a rich tool set that we use to automate and orchestrate the provisioning and management of those underlying cloud modules and then present up into the application stack those tools and self-service interfaces that allow, again, not just an IT admin, but serving the needs of developers, application owners, uh, those self-service tools to deploy and manage their workloads on top of it. No, I think it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff that has come together to get uh, the solution out for our customers. Can you talk about some of the attributes of, um, of uh, by yeah. private cloud? Yeah, so really this uh, private cloud solution is, is building on that, starting with that user experience. How do I deliver that public cloud experience, yet where you need it? Again, in those different form factors and uh, where you might have specific uh, locations where you need that. Um, we, of course, deliver that consumption model. 
So it's a rate card experience. I'm charged based on the resources that I'm consuming, but in a very predictable way. I understand what is that capacity and where I'm, I'm managing through that. Um, we think about that overall operating model, that cloud operating model and that responsibility matrix where HPE is delivering this as a service. We're providing outcomes and capabilities and SLAs, and as a customer, I'm free to use my resources focused on things that are unique to my business, running in the application tier, improving that experience. Um, location where I can deliver that is of course key. Uh, as Vishal mentioned, uh, everything from large multi-rack deployments in my core data center or in Colo, all the way through smaller form factor that I can deliver at branch locations uh, where I need those resources and support that multi-region, multi-availability zone architecture. Um, and then of course it really ties back to that open standards piece of this. How do I make sure that the same tool chain that you use to deploy on other surface areas you're able to leverage through our API, CLI, those infrastructure as code interfaces, and again, those open standards that we deliver. So well, thanks, Brian. Um, you know, we've spoken about it. Can we take a look at it? I was hoping you would say that. Yes, I would love to show you and build on, hopefully, that experience that some of you saw earlier today um, as a chance to really see where we're bringing this uh, to fruition. Uh, that concept of public or private cloud is not a new one, we know, but bringing together that full experience with the lifecycle management, that's really where this investment has come and that's where our customers are seeing a lot of value from that. So you might have seen earlier, this is the GreenLake Cloud Platform. How do I think about identity management and managing access to these resources? But the power of that private cloud enterprise solution, again, delivers that same public cloud experience, but now to my end users. Uh, this is a service and a capability that, again, we're not focused on just the IT administrator. We're empowering your end users, developers, application owners, to in a self-service way be able to manage, deploy, operate the infrastructure as they need to. Um, as Michelle mentioned, we come across those three common surface areas that you'd use to deploy a very broad aperture of applications. Virtual machines being the table stakes of a cloud solution, container cluster management, how do I scale that? Even bare metal provisioning, the power and ability to provision a bare metal physical node for large workloads, large database workloads that can't run in virtualization, uh, other solutions where I would benefit from that full uh, big iron machine capability, but delivered in that self-service way, as simple as provisioning a VM. When I think about delivering and provisioning bare metal nodes, I have great control over these uh, compute instance groups. How do I think about common tools I might have, such as SSH keys, uh, building out the networking rules and network assignments that I want to use for these policies, um, even creating shared storage volumes that I might attach them to. Creating an instance itself is super simple, right? Again, giving that, that same kind of self-service ability to spin up, give it a name. I present different instance types we talked about those cloud modules, where it allows me not just to provide one size fits all compute resources, but actually delivered specific capabilities, those optimized workload surface areas, depending on the profile and the types of applications that I'm looking to deliver. I can choose from the OSs that have been made available to me. As an administrator, I can control which versions, my golden image, patch versions, everything that needs to go into that. Uh, again, choose from those SSH key libraries, choose the networks I'm gonna deploy it to, uh, again, attach storage volumes. It's very simple to spin up and manage those bare metal instances. And in the same way, deprovision it. I can return them back to the pool very easily in that, again, self-service cloud experience. If we think about the other kind of core cloud primitives, standing up containers, I actually showed this earlier today too, but how do I make it really easy in a self-service way to stand up a container cluster, allowing my developers to publish their applications to them? Um, within our container management platform, we allow you to create and define blueprints, which would specify the starting profile of these different container clusters, depending on types of workloads, scaling policies, default starting configuration. I can choose and tune what I want my worker nodes and my control plane nodes to start as. How do I scale those? How do I find quota policies? But then once I've built those templates, I can enable my end users to stand them up very easily, just choosing from those predefined blueprints and setting up a cluster that's available in a couple of minutes. End developers then have access to look at those clusters, pull down that kube config, I have all that I need, that manifest, to allow me to publish, I understand my namespaces, my credentials, users, everything that I need to publish my application to those endpoints and get my apps up and running very quickly. 
Now, one of the key powers of this private cloud enterprise experience still ties back to kind of the overall business, the owner. How do I think about the costs that are being accrued? How do I understand the, what projects, different applications, workloads are consuming? And that's where we bring in this cost and consumption. So our consumption analytics data allows us to pull in rich telemetry data from the different services we're running. And I can use things like smart tags on different resources I've deployed or other meta metadata attributes and create my own chargeback or showback experience. How do I allocate costs against different projects or cost centers or departments or workloads? Uh, there's a lot of power both in predefined as well as custom reports. Um, we provide everything from time series data reporting all the way through how do I, how do I think about like a monthly roll up or aggregate reporting. So it gives me a ton of power there. Now the, the last key piece that I want to touch on um, is specifically around we think about that open ecosystem. We didn't get the chance to highlight this earlier today, but where we've been working on the marketplace in particular, as Vishal mentioned, how do we provide that curated marketplace of ISV services and components that can in a self-service way be easily discovered? How do I click to deploy a trial experience around that? How do I click to deploy uh, those building blocks when a container environment, a virtual machine, even think of it as like an ISO image I could put on bare metal. So this is an area that we're continuing to work on and expanding this capability uh, to again provide those same building blocks and help uh, end users quickly stand up and operate the different application stacks and workloads that they need to get onto the platform. A bit of a whirlwind tour, Vishal, but uh, I think that's key. I will touch on something that we had uh, shown earlier. Many of you might have taken advantage of it. I think we've had, as of today, like 230 of them in the afternoon, but the test drive experience available right up there on the Expo Hall in our living labs, and you'll also see this available on hp.com, where you can literally go in and start to touch and kick and, and, and play with these different services yourself. Thank you, Brian. When, um, when, when this, is this available? Yeah, you caught me, I almost forgot. This is available now. We are in select availability, meaning it's not in all geos, but we are ready now to deliver those private cloud enterprise solutions for customers. Uh, would love to talk to you and, and get those running. Thank you, Brian. You Appreciate bet. it.